Hey guys, welcome to Grateful, where we provide one-on-one -on -one online SAT and ACT tutoring to students all around the world. Right now, we're going to talk about a quick last-minute SAT tip before the March 2022 SAT, and it's the idea of the altitude to the hypotenuse of a right triangle. This has been sneaking its way into SATs from what we've been noticing, so it's worth a little peek. It's totally the kind of idea that if you weren't really prepared for this, uh, there's not a lot of ways to get these answers. So let's go ahead and get you prepped and ready to roll on your next SAT. So here's the idea. A uh, right triangle is a right triangle. It has a hypotenuse. And the line that I'm highlighting here is the altitude to the hypotenuse. You don't really need to know this so specifically, uh, really, but for those who are curious, an altitude hits one of the sides of a shape at a right angle, and therefore it tells you how tall the shape is. So if we rotated these two triangles around and made them look a little bit more like this triangle, uh, we'll see that this altitude is telling us the height of the triangle. So we literally have the altitude to the hypotenuse because that line is hitting the hypotenuse. It's the altitude to the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So that's the boring part of it. Um, but what you need to know for the SAT is that there's a certain ratio that you need to use in this situation. It's A over B equals B over C. So I like to think of a caterpillar in this situation, but it's just a certain ratio. So for instance, if we had a right triangle with an altitude, and so I've got my right angle symbols, and if we already knew that this length right here was 5, and this length right here was three, and we were trying to find the length of the altitude, using that same ratio, it would be five over x equals x over three. And uh, let me go ahead and write that in a darker marker here. Five over x equals x over three. And you can cross multiply that, and you'd get x squared equals 15, squared to both sides, and x would be equal to the square root of 15, and that would be the answer there. So that's how that ratio gets set up. Now, this one here is a little bit more complicated, but still doable. Um, as opposed to a caterpillar, this one you could think of maybe a Nike swoosh. And the order of the ratio goes like this. B over C equals C over A plus B. So you see the little sort of Nike swoosh in there? And if we had uh, an example of that, let's just say that we've got, once again, the altitude to the hypotenuse. But instead of having what we had on the left, what we had over here, instead of having like a T shape, that would be the reason for you to use that first ratio. In this situation, we kind of have like a little bit of an L going on because we're going to know this value. Let's say that one is seven. And we're going to know sort of information about this. So we've got information about sort of those two sides of the triangle. Um, and in that situation, we're gonna say this over this equals this over this. So putting that into practice, that would be, that would be three over seven equals seven over X plus three. So that's definitely not the right marker for that. Three over seven, equals seven over x plus three. And from there, we could cross multiply and solve. So, you know, three times x plus three equals seven times seven, which is 49, seven times seven, which is 49. And from there, we would just solve for x. So it's a matter of having these two ratios memorized and being able to use them in different situations. So looking at a couple of examples here, Let's just imagine in this one, we were trying to find X. So if we're looking at this situation, the thing to notice is that you've got the altitudes of the hypotenuse and you've got kind of like that T shape going on there. And that would give you eight over four equals four over X because we used our caterpillar. We said this over this equals this over this. And the caterpillar continues squiggling its way through the page. Um, and then to solve, you'd cross multiply. Eight times X equals four times four, 16. Divide by eight on both sides, and you get two, and we're done. 
So now let's check out one example of the more difficult altitude to the hypotenuse ratio. And that might be this one right here. Number five on this worksheet that we have here. Um, and so here we got to use our Nike swoosh. We've got to say this over this equals this over this. Now, how do we know where to start? In this situation where we don't have the T shape, but we have kind of like this L shape going on. What I want you to notice is that the hypotenuse of the entire shape is broken down into two parts. It's broken down into 12 and two. That's kind of a giveaway that we're using this ratio. And once you have that, and then you've got one of the legs of the right triangle that's kind of connected to that hypotenuse, that's our excuse to use the Nike swoosh. So two over X equals X over 14. And let's go ahead and uh, write that out. So we've got two over X equals X over 14, which is the 12 plus two. Cross multiply that, you've got X times X, X squared equals two times 14, 28. Square root of both sides and you get X equals the square root of 28, which in radical form would be two root seven. If you don't know how to do that, um, you know, that's subject for another video, but definitely something you wanna be able to do, simplify something in radical form. So that's the tougher one. So let's try one more example of that. Uh, and this is kind of an example of everything at once. So let's go ahead and give it, give it a try. Let's start with that tougher ratio. So once again, we've got the hypotenuse of the entire triangle broken into two pieces. And then we've got the other side of the L. So that tells us it's our more, our more difficult ratio that we can use to find X. So if we're doing that, we're going to say, 6 over x equals x over 6 plus 24. So writing that ratio on my page, that would be 6 over x equals x over 6 plus 24, which is 30. Cross multiply that, and you're going to get x times x, x squared, equals 6 times 30, 180. And x is the square root of 180, which if we're simplifying that in radical form, uh, 180 is like 18 times 10, right? So let's just go ahead and say we've got 18, which is nine times two and 10, which is two times five. So I just broke down 180 into its basic factors. And I'm going to run that on the calculator. Three times three times two times two times five. So just making sure that I did that right. And a square root is basically saying what number multiplied by itself twice gives you the number we're looking for. So square. Uh, so here we have a pair of two. So I'm going to take them out and put one on the outside. Here I have another pair of two. I'm going to take them out and put one on the outside. And square root of 180 would simplify to six root five. So just to replay that real quick, I took 180 down to its most basic factors, three times three times two times two times five. And because the square root is saying what number multiplies by itself twice, we're looking for groups of two. So I found one group of two there. And when it comes out of the square root, it comes out as a single number, another square root, another pair here. And when it comes out, it comes out as a single number, but the five stays underneath. So once again, root 180 is the same as six times the square root of five, six radical five. So we just found what X is. It's six root five, six rad five. And now to find y, we're going to use the easier ratio. We're going to bring back the caterpillar. So this over this equals this over this. And going ahead and writing out that ratio, that would be 6 over y equals y over 24. Cross multiplying that, we'd have y times y, y squared equals 6 times 24. And so we take the square root of both sides now. And I'm not even going to multiply it out. I'm just going to leave it as 6 times 24. Why? because when we simplify in radical form, I'm gonna want those basic factors anyway, right? So this is gonna be two times, two times three for the six, and then 24 is eight times three. So two times two times two times three. Eight is really two times two times two, right? And now we're looking for those groups of two again. So one group of two, cross it out and put a two on the outside. Another group of two, these two right here, we're gonna cross those out, one of them and another, and put another two on the outside. And two threes, I'm gonna cross out these two threes and put a single three on the outside. 
So this actually um, simplified perfectly. It's three times two times two, 12. And so it's simplified to 12, which means that six times 24, without using my calculator there, was 144. So we had y squared equals 144, and therefore the square root of that was 12. And that's how we found x and y. So this came out to 12. And this is how you find sides on the altitude to the hypotenuse of a right triangle. This little miscellaneous topic that's been sneaking its way onto SATs. We hope it helped a lot. If you would like to find out how grateful can tutor you on your next SAT or ACT, go ahead and reach out. We'd be more than happy to help. Thanks a lot.